Hi everyone and welcome to the Mel Hewish team meeting. Um, this is a pretty exciting one today um, because this is the first of the year and as you know we completed and finished being an area. So I'm an area manager thanks to the team. Yay! <laughs> so you guys are awesome. This was huge for us to do and you know I started my Arbonne journey in June and to you know be area manager by the end of the year, so we can start off um, in January. It's going to be a huge thing to accomplish, but of course, it couldn't have been done without the team and all of you. So quickly, I just want to thank all the new consultants that came on board to join us on this journey, LJ included. <laughs> thank you, LJ. And um, I also want to give a quick shout out to uh, the people that are in district manager and qualification, and that is Desiree. Congratulations, uh, Chris. Um, oh wait, Leone. Congratulations, and I think we have one more. Christina, I can't forget you. Congratulations as well. And then I wanted um, to also say welcome aboard to all of the new consultants. Um, I'm so happy that you decided to join our team. We are definitely all superstars on this team. Everyone included. No one left out. And we just had a really rocking December, and I'm looking forward to what we all are going to do in January in our business. So to kick us off, we're going to have LJ um, talk to us about, you know, 2016 and setting your goals so that we can continue that momentum that we have going and make sure that 2016 is a wonderful year for all of us. Um, and, you know, we all need goal setting, even the millionaires of the world sit down every year and decide where they want to be by the end of the year. And that's how they make it happen, because what you think about, you bring about, and this team has definitely shown that. We all had a goal, we met that goal, and my wish for everyone is to continue that so that we all meet our goal. And I'm so happy and honored to have LJ with us to help us with that task, because this is, in her arena, what she does. So I will, with that, stop talking and turn it over to LJ. Um, so welcome, LJ, and thank you for doing this today. Really appreciate it. Yay, thank you, Cassandra. So glad to be here and be a part of your team. And this is a really exciting time, like you said, right? Just uh, with the Meluish area, I'm like, oh my gosh, how cool. Yeah, so awesome. with that, I definitely want to wish everyone a happy new year. It's only day 11, so it's still early enough to say that. So happy new year, everyone. Um, with that, so today's topic is going to be about a fresh start and outlook for 2016. So for me, um, like Cassandra was saying, this is what I do. So to be honest, like I was up and I was like, oh my gosh, like we can talk about this and we can talk about that. I think I can talk for hours on how to create a fresh start. And then I thought, okay, let me not do that. And I know time is precious for all of us. So what I decided to do was uh, narrow it down and kind of look at what you probably, some things you've already heard of and you already know, but you'll just hear them again, as well as some things that you haven't heard and a new perspective on them. But before I begin, for those of you who are listening or watching us and you don't know my story, I wanted to share my Arvon journey with you. So for me, it started back in 2003, 2002. So I discovered I was on this journey and had learned that what we put inside our bodies really matter. I had learned about ingredients, start you know, meeting with a homeo homeopathic doctor and just different people. And I thought, wow, you mean to tell me, you know, there are ingredients that can cause depression and, and just health concerns and things like that. So I thought, wow, I'm going to watch what I eat and look at the back and see what, what's inside my food and things like that. So um, I thought I had every base covered and I was good. But then I had this wonderful woman talk to my mom. She had an event at her house. So that was my first Arbonne independent consultant. So it was about three years after I learned about what I needed to watch um, as far as food that I learned about what goes on our bodies and our skin matters uh, just as much. And so for the last 10 years, I've made it my goal to just really take care of myself and my health and to share with people so that they at least have an opportunity to <coughs> and do better and make a wiser choice in their life. And so I absolutely love our bond for that reason, because honestly, you know, who knows what the last 10 years would have been like had I not known those things. And, and change my habits. And so with that said, we're gonna dive right into our topic today. 
and that's about a fresh start. So the first thing I want to talk about were the three common things that people usually hear when we talk about goal setting, right? So uh, let's see if I can, if you can see my, with the light, can you see that? Not really, is it kind of faint? So let's see, because uh, I'm adjusting and adapting. If it doesn't work, then we'll, we won't use it. Okay, here we go. So three common, uh, So there's three common goal setting uh, or ways to set goals. So those are uh, something that you might all have heard of are SMART goals. So people say make sure that your goals are SMART. So that's a common thing that people talk about. So a SMART goal is something that um, the question is asking yourself if it's somehow, uh, what is a SMART goal? It is. If your goal is uh, measurable, attainable, and if it's, um, looking here, I have to cheat and read my notes because I forgot what a SMART goal was. So there's three methods to achieving goals that people usually use. So they usually use um, the SMART goals and they say, okay, set SMART goals. Make sure that you visualize and that you use an accountability partner or you, uh, you know, have something a reward system or an incentive for yourself as you set your goals. So those are the common things. So I wanted to, of course, touch on those because those are absolutely crucial and important as we set goals. And then I also wanted to put a spin on it and look at things differently. So with SMART goals, you have to forgive me, but I'm drawing a blank on what SMART goals are. I'm like, where's my cheat sheet? So a SMART goal is something that um, is measurable, attainable, and I'm forgetting what the S and the R are. So when it comes to me, I'll share that. But the main thing I'm going to talk about was fresh. So a fresh. Oh, oh what, what was that? Remind me. Did someone say something? Smart. I mean, specific, measurable, um, achievable, results focused, and time bound. Our password's the same, right? Okay. And what was the, um, the R? The R is results focused. Okay. Is this still not so? <laughs> and time bound for the team. Time bound. Okay, so as you can see with me drawing a blank and you chiming in, that these are known. These are well known ways to set goals, right? So I didn't want to take the time and talk about these because they're you already know them. So for achieving goals, it's like keep doing what you're doing. But let's add something to that so that it'll stick to your conscious mind. So this is conscious. This is something that you're aware about and you can think about it or you knew it without me um, having to tell you, right? So what we're going to talk about today is diving into the unconscious mind and the subconscious mind. The part that where the inner critic lies and often will try to interfere to protect us and not allow us to achieve our goals. So in order to... Uh, Anchor in your goal, you want to anchor it into your conscious, your unconscious mind, your subconscious mind. And so to do that, you want to make sure that your goals are fresh. So if you think about power 28 exclamation mark. I know. If you think about the word fresh, what does fresh mean? So for something to be fresh, it's right, right? A fresh goal is something that maybe is new. Let's do a new password there. It's going to be fresh. It's innovative. Okay. And it's lively. It's alive, and it's something that isn't stale. Right? It's something to be fresh. It's, it's something that won't... Uh, it won't disappear or be boring to you. So it's important in creating our goals for 2016 that our goals not only be smart, but they be fresh. Why is that important? Because our unconscious mind, it's like when we're driving in a car, our mind gets used to patterns and habits where we do things without even thinking. So it's easy for us to set goals and to begin to go into the habits and patterns of uh, negativity or procrastination, frustration, when we have challenges come up that 
have our momentum instead of like, you know, continuing or going up to go down and possibly die. And then that's where we have to have those power talks, their accountability partners and push us forward, right? So today in looking at fresh goals and making sure that goals are fresh, it's important to say, you know, ask yourself, are my goals stale? Are these the same goals, ways that I approach my goals every year? Do I say, okay, they're smart, check, that's done. Do I say, okay, I have an accountability partner, check, that's done. And then do I say, okay, I'm going to reward myself. And so those things are great. If that works for you and serves you, absolutely keep doing them. But if you find that it's not working or you find yourself in the same habit, uh, like say a month from now or two months from now, where you're like, wow, I don't have my mojo and momentum. It's kind of a flat line compared to when we first started the new year. Then you, a question might, you might want to ask yourself was, wow, are my goals fresh? Because the unconscious mind and subconscious mind honestly wants variety. Otherwise, uh, we get bored and we kind of plateau and go into that, you know, just that cruise control mode. So to avoid that, keep them fresh. And that's one way to have a fresh start to your goals and a new beginning. So um, something else that I wanted you to consider, I wanted to share with you that I thought might be helpful is that uh, we need anchors. So our subconscious, subconscious mind is there to protect us. So it'll do that at all costs. That even means if it's self-sabotages us or tells us that we can't do it or that person, you know, won't want to hear what we have to say or they look too sharp or, um, you know, I believe in myself, but I'm tired today or, you know what, maybe tomorrow. So for many of us, um, we're driven by either pain or pleasure. So if we feel like, you know what, I'm hurting or this person is hurting or financially, I really feel like I'm not where I want to be. So that will move before it. That's an example of pain. But some of us say, you know what? No, like uh, how Cassandra has that idea or the opportunity now she's made it so she can go on that trip. That's pleasure. So some people are really pumped and excited and they say, you know what? I'm driven by pleasure. I absolutely love the opportunity to feel good. So I'm going to do whatever it takes so that I can feel good and feel more of that. But other people are like, you know what? I don't want to feel bad. So I'll do whatever it takes to not feel bad in my life. So this is a way to add that to your toolbox as you create your goals for 2016. And I know that some of you have already created your vision boards or you're going to be doing that in a couple uh, you know, weeks or in a, a weekend, next weekend. So that's really great as you create your vision boards to, to ask yourself, okay, are they fresh? Another thing to consider is, um, do they serve me and my values? So to ask yourself, what are your values? So we usually have like four categories for our values. And I have a PowerPoint um, on this that I had a little technical difficulties, but we're rolling with the punches. So I'll make sure to upload the PowerPoint on our uh, area website, Facebook site, so that you can have that later. So values, it's important when we set our goals, uh, sometimes we, not all of us, but oftentimes it's easy to forget, you know, what's important to us and what matters. So oftentimes for our values, it's our belief. You know, whether they be spiritual or just our philosophy or the way, you know, we go about doing things. It's also our, um, it's kind of like our financial values, you know, and like how we see money, if we see money as energy, or we see money as a, a means for success, or we see money as a tool. So based on that, we'll determine our goals and how we go about achieving our goals, depending on our values and how we see things. So beliefs, values, and then also our relationships. So it's important to, as we set our goals, to take a look and look at our relationships and what's important to us, what relationships matter, whether it be our team, it's our customers, our clients, our family, and uh, even our intimate relationships or our relationship with ourselves. So all those play a part in our value in our goals. So whether we're creating vision boards for our goals or we're you know, writing in our journal, it's very important to see if your goals are fresh and also if uh, they're within your values, because that will 
anchor them in and make you more likely to maintain momentum uh, when failures, setbacks, upsets, and frustrations show up. Something else that's helpful is when I talk about When I talked about, are they fresh? One reason why I um, you talk about taking the fresh test, you want to ask yourself on a scale of zero to 10, where would you rank your, your, uh, yourself and your goals and as far as like how fresh you feel they are? Uh, the reason why I bring this up is because we all have basic human needs. So there's a Maslow's hierarchy of needs you may have all heard of. And there's also um, human need psychology that talks about our needs and how if our goals are meeting our needs as well as making us feel good and they're within our values, then it increases, you know, trifold, if not quadruples, our opportunity and our, our motivation to maintain those goals and the momentum. So if we're already like, excited and you've achieved one level, it helps you to even take it to the next level. So with, you know, taking the, what I call the fresh test, you want to see, you know, like I said, are they stale? Do you feel like they're uh, meeting your values or are they, are they doing, um, are they ripe? Are they uh, new? Are they original? Or do you feel like, you know what, um, they're just exactly the way they were last year and that served me, so I'm going to continue with them. So with that, we have human needs. So we have a need for certainty, you may have heard, or security. We have a need for variety. We have a need for significance. And we have a need for love and connection. And you may have heard of uh, like self-actualization. So that's our need for growth and contribution, right? So with that, as we climb the ladder or we um, hit the like next level or steps of our goals, in our mind, our unconscious mind is keeping track. So if our goals are fresh, that helps us meet our uh, need for variety, as well as our need for certainty, because we planned it out, we mapped it out, you know, we wrote it in our journal or on a piece of paper. So we're basically working with all levels of our mind and our brain to help anchor it in. So with that, then the next thing would be to look at your momentum. So I have this really great uh, slide and you know I was just like oh my gosh like this is gonna really drill everything home that I have to say for the team and it's gonna be amazing right so now I'll use my uh <laughs> my uh skills and you'll get the idea so it, it shows like four different things that happens to goals or you know when we are once we start them or we set them so there's one thing where it's just a straight line and a goal will like when you say this is like you create the goal and then uh, you achieve the goal. So that could be a sign for like, it's just straight across. Some people set goals, make it happen, no problems, no bumps, no bruises or anything in between. Or it could be you set a goal and plateau and never achieve it. It doesn't go anywhere. So that is what happens to some people when they set goals. And that's where I heard uh, on the call the other day, Chris and Lauren had talked about like 90% of people or nine out of 10 people fail. So that would be an example of what happens, you know, for whatever reason, it didn't sink in or anchor in in their unconscious mind. Or, you know, when those stressors came up and uh, they lost momentum, they didn't, you know, look at their values and other things to help, you know, keep it uh, to fill it in or to remember their why so they don't give up. And then other people, of course, as you know, set goals. And the goal is to have it, you know, be like a straight, straight up shot. But there's times where there's different stressors and issues that come up that make the goal, you know, you achieve it, but it wasn't, you know, like an easy pathway to it. So in these moments where we have stressors or we have upsets and setbacks, or we thought, wow, you know, I'm going to 
at, you know, uh, as they shared about that wave, you know, I'm going to just have my wave and I have a skull I'm going to do in the first quarter. And then when that doesn't happen, it's like, wait a minute, you know, I, I have faith, I believed, I used the law of attraction, you know, or I used my journal and I had my focus word, you know, like what the heck happened? And sometimes it's just no matter how great we plan, um, things don't go according to that plan. And so just having the mindset and, and having all the different things that we use, whether it's the smart goals and all the different tools in our toolbox, is just really important to remember like, how to anchor them in. And that's using the, um, if nothing else, that you remember from today is just really uh, remembering that our unconscious and conscious mind need to be involved in order for our goals to really be achieved. So another thing I wanted to share with you today is that our, in order to have our goals achieved and really make it happen, it's important for us to also um, consider our affirmations of what we say to ourselves because honestly i don't know if you've ever heard a, a phrase or expression i forget who said it first but it says no one talks to you more than you do so the whole day whether we're driving around in our car or we're you know like yelling at the computer or whatever kind of conversation we have we're having you know we're talking to ourselves either in our mind or uh, thinking out loud so it's important to um to have affirmation as part of our goal setting so whether it's just having that one word, you know, your focus word is great. So whether you take your focus word and use that and you just uh, speak that to into existence and, you know, like um, whether it's a prayer or just, a, you know, giving thanks or, you know, thank you for my growth or my organization today was really a smooth day um, or, you know, my goals were easy, you know, easily and freak easily and uh, effectively uh, achieved. So that's affirmations will be important because it's talking to your conscious and unconscious mind, your subconscious. So these are more so for that level, kind of like that iceberg part of us that um, is having dialogue and inner conflicts or even fear. So to um, best way to dance with that fear and to eliminate that fear is to speak affirmations. So whether it's, uh, you know, in the morning when you first get up and then throughout the day, honestly, until you close your eyes to have some affirmations, uh, whether it's just your focus word or a sentence or a couple things you add to your toolbox to really help empower you with that. So that's something that can really be helpful. And I know um, I wanted to share a story with you because I was working with someone who just felt like, you know, this is really great. This sounds amazing. Uh, but then when she would leave, she would say things to herself that were disempowering. And so she would say, for example, you know, LJ, um, I want to do this, but I just can't. Like, you know, I've tried this before. It just won't work. Or I've set goals before and it won't happen. And no matter what I do, just over and over again, um, it just won't work. And I thought, wow, you know, it's really interesting. I think you should listen to your recording of yourself and hear yourself because you're, you know, confirming for your unconscious mind, like, you know, it's like self-sabotage and you're just having this dialogue and confirming for yourself. So it's really powerful. So if you, with goals being fresh, like, so if you do what you've already been doing that's worked for you, like, that's really great. And then to, like I said, take it to the next level, it's talking to your unconscious mind and your subconscious mind. And then adding affirmations and things that, you know, basically uh, kind of like a plethora and just pouring into, you know, your, your mind, your body, your soul to really make your goals stick. And uh, the last thing I wanted to share was just that um, part of our goals and achieving them is our outlook. So there's something that you might have heard and nothing has, Tony Robbins often says, which, you know, I, I have to admit that I love Tony. Uh, there's all kind of gurus out there, but he's one of my favorites. So one thing that Tony says is nothing in, me, in life has meaning except the meaning we give it. And so it's so true when it comes to our goals, like the meaning of our goals and drilling that in, especially during the, the times of setbacks and upsets, really makes a difference. And so it's important to make sure that the meaning we give our goals is a meaning that will last, uh, you know, like the whole year long or a lifetime. So 
our perspective is that outlook that I was talking about. So in creating our goals, so you wanna um, think about your perspective and what the meaning is you're giving it. So some people, for example, um, you know, I, I really appreciate Arbonne and just being on the training calls and hearing different people, you know, talk about like, wow, you know, this is a really great way to have a, a, another revenue stream, or this is a way to have, you know, an amazing car, go on trips, have family, that love and connection. This is really, you know, Arbonne has a, a lot of great opportunities and ways to really help you thrive. So one thing that is important and crucial is uh, your perspective and need. So with your goals, um, if those benefits and things are really serving you, then that's amazing. But if you find that, wow, for my goals to, like for me to actually get out there and say, okay, I'm going to talk to 10 people today, or, you know, I really want uh, the people, right people to flow and, and whoever should, comes my way, I'm going to give them the opportunity, you know, to talk to them. Like, say if that's one of your goals, or maybe your goal is, you know what, I just want to be the best me I know how to be. So then with perspective and meaning, that's going to help make a difference. So um, let's see. Cassandra, how am I doing for time? I need to unmute myself. <laughs> no, you're doing you're doing good. Um, are you ready to wrap it up? I can. I've got a couple of things I was ready to send on. I want. Yeah. To so, so I am um, honestly daily affirmations. Just to you know, uh, repeat that fresh, making it fresh and new, um, so that your unconscious mind is you know tapped in and it's not just on that cruise control after a while and you plateau. And so those are some ways to create a, like a fresh start and new beginnings for your goals in 2016. And I have some more things to share and I'll share those on the PowerPoint and please feel free for um, anyone to Facebook me or, or reach out to me and I'll, I'll be happy to, you know, support you and in, in helping you with your goal. Oh, that's great. Thank you, LJ. That's awesome. So I was, I'm so happy that you didn't go over smart goals i'm tired of hearing about smart goals thank you for giving us something different <laughs> every time someone does a goal setting it starts with the smart goal so i totally appreciate you going over that because as i was thinking through some stuff i was jotting down notes like oh my god that's so good it's the whole fresh part of it i think is what creates that momentum as well especially not just in this business but in life keeping it fresh because, and I like the psychology part there, that your brain needs that. I mean, that's the important thing. So that was really awesome. So thank you. And so I just want to have a couple of housekeeping things too I wanted to go through. So we have our region call tonight. For those of you that don't know, for 7 o'clock, the Brightman region um, has a call. So look on the Facebook page um, for that number. So that's when Julia updates us on all the information and stuff going on in our region. Um, we also have the vision board party, um, which is awesome. Cause LJ talked about we should be having our vision boards created. So if you haven't done yours, then join the party on Saturday at Julia's house. And for those of you that live in another state and can't be there, I put up a suggestion of let's do it all together via Zoom. Like get your supplies, we'll have our supplies, we'll all get the video going, and we'll have one big party together as we all get together on vision boards talk about what we're going to do. So with, within that, I just wanted to give some people some ideas on basically taking what LJ just talked about and then how to apply that into reality. So getting starting from the beginning for people that want to get started or people that want to relaunch their business, the most important thing is probably to start creating your prospect list. And for those of us that have a prospect list, update the prospect list. So that's people that you're going to come in contact with that you know, it's just you want in your network, you know, write their names down, have have a list that you're constantly educating people, you're adding people to that list. Um, and that could just be one of your goals that you have. You know, and the other thing that you want to do is, you know, make sure that for each person on that list, you have an action plan. Um, so it's whether you're, you know, mine is, you know, I'm either going to ask them to attend a meeting or an event so that we can, they can under see the products, you can share the products, business, um, I'm going to ask them to meet for coffee or for a glass of wine. 
so we can, you know, share and talk about the business a little bit further. Um, or I'm going to ask them to join the business. There's some people that you come across that are just, you know, from day one, you can just launch right into it because they've told you their opportunity. So I kind of keep my goals, and that's what I've set for my prospect list, is to be a little bit more diligent and saying these are the three things that I have for each prospect on that list and making sure I do that. And, the, you know, I, the other thing I just jotted down right here is, you know, goals are important. And then I also like what Dr. talked about, about the belief. You know, there's that belief thing there that you have to believe that goal. You, know, you have to have belief in what you say you're going to do because that having the goal and having the belief creates the action. And the action is where you're going to go out and actually do something so that that goal can become a reality. So part of the, and, and part of that is having the right mindset. LJ kind of talked about, we talk, we talk to ourselves more than anybody, and I chuckle because we all do. We have the voice in our head that, you know, as we get ready to call someone on the prospect list to follow up, oh, what are they going to say? No, I don't know. And, you know, and we're telling ourselves what they're going to say before we even pick up the phone. So a lot of it is you have to change that mindset. So thank you, LJ, for that reminder of, you know, that if you're going to talk to yourself, make it positive. Don't say they're not going to appreciate it. You know, I'm, that's what I'm constantly doing myself, saying everyone wants an opportunity to share. Everyone wants, um, you know, a business opportunity and a way to make more money or a way to, you know, have a great, um, have a great life. So that's what I think of now is, you know, there's so many people that are looking for this opportunity and we can provide that to them. Thank you. I love that. I can, I have, I will, I believe. That's awesome. Um, and then a quick goals that you can write down for the year within our bond is going to GTC. You know, that's the big global training conference in Las Vegas. There's going to be like, there, I think they said like 14,000 consultants there from all over the world. So make sure you have that as a goal to attend that because you just started in the last month or so, you can go for only $99 registration fee and then through working your business you can even earn that money back so look into that and put that down as a goal the other goal would be the Arbonne incentive trip and that's the big trip to the Bahamas I think it's five to seven days I don't even know I really didn't look at it <laughs> because I'm like I'm gonna be there anyway so and put that on your list because what better place you know to go to Bahamas to hang out with a bunch of positive people who are working their business doing the same thing you are and it's all expenses paid. You know, you get get yourself there, but the company is going to pay for the room, they're going to pay for food and beverage, and you know, there's going to be tons of activities. So that's what you want your life to be when you're doing this type of business. You know, you're working hard, but that's something that you get rewarded for your efforts, you know. So make sure that's a goal um, to be able to do that because that even has a whole that momentum and it helps with that belief so that you can grow your um, and then there's those, of course, that want to go into a manager qualification, district manager, area manager, region qualifications, you know, you can put those on there. And when you do that, you know, what, what's the QB that you want to have per month? How many new consultants? Those are all things that you can jot down um, to make your goals, um, you know, more in line and keep them fresh. Definitely keep them fresh. So, sorry about that. <laughs> So with that, um, I just, you know, I just, a couple of things on my mind. So that was great, LJ. That's exactly what we need to start off 2015. I cannot wait to see where we all end up um, for the end of the year, but I know January is going to be great. So with that, I'll go ahead and, and end the meeting because I'm getting a bunch of stuff going on here on my phone. <laughs> I will end the meeting. Thank you guys for joining in. Thanks to everyone who's listening after the call live. I'm going to post this online. Um, so if you need have any questions on setting your goals or want to run a couple by me, let me know. I'm always here to help. I'm sure LJ as well. L, you know, reach out to LJ and she can help you with that process as well. And you know, let's just have a rocking 2016. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everybody. I really appreciate. It. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> thanks guys. Bye.